Hello everyone, I am Dr. Mohammad Tarek. We will discuss about connective tissue disease related interstitial lung disease that is CTD-ILD. In today's presentation we will discuss about CTD-ILD definition, classification, how we diagnose CTD-ILD and different pattern of CT scan, treatment options available and briefly about interstitial pneumonia with autoimmune features. Learning is a continuous process so let's start learning today. What is connective tissue disease? Connective tissue disease is a group of systemic autoimmune diseases that target the connective tissues of the body. Connective tissues are present in the skin, joints, blood vessels, kidneys, and lungs, etc. What is interstitial lung disease? Interstitial lung disease are characterized by damage to the lung parenchyma and is mediated by varying degree of inflammation and fibrosis. Interstitial lung disease is a common manifestation of connective tissue diseases. CTD related ILD is defined as evidence of ILD demonstrated by CT scan of the lung in the setting of an established connective tissue disease. ILD exists in about 40 to 50 percent of patients with connective tissue disease and CTD ILD is a leading cause of morbidity and mortality. Common CT finding of ILD in varying degrees include reticulation, ground glass opacities, traction bronchiectasis, honeycombing, and or cyst formation. And other causes of parenchymal lung disease and connective tissue disease need to be ruled out such as infection, drug-induced lung disease, malignancy, and or other interstitial lung diseases. Interstitial lung disease is a common manifestation of connective tissue diseases. The most common connective tissue disease demonstrating feature of ILD include rheumatoid arthritis, systemic sclerosis, idiopathic inflammatory myopathy, and less commonly include Sjogren's syndrome, systemic lupus erythematosus, and mixed connective tissue diseases. ILD may arise from a broad spectrum of distinct etiologies, both known and unknown. They can manifest as a pulmonary complication of an underlying connective tissue disease or as a result of exposure to an antigen or different drugs. They are broadly classified into these categories, idiopathic interstitial pneumonias, which is due to unknown cause and idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is one of the most common ILD in this group. Connective tissue disease related ILD due, due to different connective tissue diseases, cranomatous diseases such as sarcoidosis, hypersensitivity pneumonitis, environmental or medicine exposure such as asbestos, nitrofurantine, bleomycin, and certain other drugs, and rare causes such as vasculitis and eosinophilic pneumonitis. There is a distinct ILD called interstitial pneumonia with autoimmune features, IPAF, and this is classified under CTD ILD. Histologically, CTD ILD are diverse and are grouped into seven main types. Usual interstitial pneumonia, UIP, Non-specific interstitial pneumonia (NSIP), discomato interstitial pneumonia (DIP), respiratory bronchiolitis, organizing pneumonia, diffuse alveolar damage, and lymphoid interstitial pneumonia. NSIP pattern on CT scan is the most frequent of CTD ILD, followed by usual interstitial pneumonia that is U. IP more common in rheumatoid arthritis. Histologically and radiologically, 
CTDIRD may be having more inflammatory pattern as in NSIP, organizing pneumonia and LIP to mainly fibrotic pattern as in UIP. The clinical response to immunosuppressive is determined by the pattern with more favored response in the inflammatory group of IRD. Proportion of CTD IRD vary. NSIP pattern account for large proportion of patients with systemic sclerosis, idiopathic inflammatory myopathy, while UIP pattern is more common in rheumatoid arthritis. Risk factors are different depending on the underlying CTD. In rheumatoid arthritis related ILD, the strongest risk factor includes smoking, male sex, CCP antibodies, MUC5B gain of function mutation, while in systemic sclerosis associated ILD, ethnicity, diffuse skin score, and TSCL antibodies are the strongest risk factor, and in inflammatory idiopathic myopathies associated ILD, ethnicity, G1 antibodies and genetic factor play an important role. The complex etiology of CTD ILD includes genetic risk, dysregulated immunity, and environmental triggers such as smoking, which interact leading to the final disease. Specific autoantibodies may increase the risk of CTD ILD. CTD ILD exhibit broad spectra of clinical manifestations from asymptomatic to severe dyspnea and from single organ respiratory involvement to multi organ involvement. There may be features of underlying connective tissue disease and constitutional symptoms. Usually, there are relapses and remission during the course of the disease. Respiratory symptoms include dry persistent cough slowly progressive breathlessness and on examination there are usually bilateral basal crackles, clubbing in idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, central cyanosis and right heart failure as a late feature. Diagnosis of CTD IRD is primarily based on distinct pathology subtypes, imaging as well as related CTD and autoantibodies profile. Multidisciplinary team discussion is important in reconciling clinical laboratory and imaging data and providing a means to coordinate the views of pulmonologists and rheumatologists in formulating diagnostic and treatment strategies. Diagnostic workup include baseline blood test, ESR, CK level, serum angiotensin converting enzyme level, autoantibodies which includes ANA antibodies and disease specific autoantibodies, echocardiogram in all patients to rule out pulmonary hypertension and cardiomyopathies, and skin and muscle biopsy in selective patients. It is important to note that pulmonary function test may be normal in early disease. A restrictive pattern with a decrease in the total lung capacity and reduced force vital capacity in normal or high force expiratory volume in one second with increase in FEV1 to FEC ratio is often seen. Diffusing capacity for carbon monoxide may be reduced due to pulmonary vascular disease. Decrease maximal inspiratory and expiratory pressures may be noted in patients with idiopathic inflammatory myositis and respiratory muscle involvement. The most common HRCT pattern in patients with CTD ILD are nonspecific interstitial pneumonia NSIP, usual interstitial pneumonia UIP, and organizing pneumonia. In rheumatoid arthritis, Usual interstitial pneumonia is the commonest pattern, while in systemic sclerosis, nonspecific interstitial pneumonia is more common, while ILD associated with 
idiopathic inflammatory myopathy is often characterized by overlapping pattern of NSIP and organizing pneumonia. The three radiographic findings that suggest an IRD secondary to CTD are anterior upper lobe sign, exuberant honeycombing, and straight edge sign. Anterior upper lobe sign is defined by a concentration of fibrosis in the anterior upper lobe with relative sparing of the rest of the upper lobe. While exuberant honeycombing mean that honeycombing constituting more than 70% of the fibrotic portion of the lung. And straight edge sign indicate basal lung fibrosis with sharp demarcation and craniocaudal plan. This is an axial slice of a chest CT scan which is showing normal lung parenchyma. The CT scan of the chest showing numerous poorly defined ground glass opacities and some reticulation in patient with NSIP pattern. The CT scan is showing mainly reticulation and honeycombing in a patient with UIP pattern. Other diagnostic workup include indices of oxygenation at rest and with activity, pulmonary hypertension, especially in limited cutaneous systemic sclerosis variant of systemic sclerosis. Lung biopsies are less commonly required. Serum KL6, which is a useful predictor of interstitial lung involvement and disease activity biomarker, is mainly used in research. CTD-ILD is a difficult condition to treat. However, asymptomatic CTD-ILD patient with normal function test and with no evidence of disease progression may be followed up without any treatment. Indication to use glucocorticoid and aminosuppressive agents depend on the primary disease, systemic activity, reversibility, and ILD clinical course. As a general rule, all treatment decisions should be made in close collaboration with aromatologist and pulmonologist. As there are medications that can treat both ILD and CTD, an effort should be made to find out one medication that is effective for both diseases. Medication therapy involves either aminosuppressive therapy or antifibrotic therapy for symptomatic and or progressive fibrosing CTD ILD patient. You will always come across this term progressive fibrosing ILD and this was first time defined in NBUILD trial. Progressive fibrosing ILD is defined with one of the following criteria in the prior 24 months. A relative decline in the FVC of 10% of the predicted value or a relative decline in the FVC of about 5% with either worsening in respiratory symptom or an increase in the extent of fibrosis on HRCT or a combination of widespread respiratory symptom and an increased extent of fibrosis on HRCT. Nantidonib or tyrosine kinase inhibitor has been approved by FDA based on the result of NBEL trial for all patients with progressive fibrosing ILD and systemic sclerosis associated ILD. Census and NBEL trials showed that nantidonib reduced the annual rate of loss of FVC. Treatment regimes uh, for RAILD are limited to case reports. The only FDA approved therapy is nantidonib, which is approved for progressive fibrotic ILD regardless of etiology. There is limited reports of successful treatment with methotrexate, azathioprine, cyclosporine, mycophenolate, TNF inhibitors, and rituximab. Current evidence demonstrated that abatacept play a favorable role in the control of RAILD. Mycophenolate or cyclophosphamide have been used as initial treatment of systemic sclerosis associated ILD. Systemic steroid role is debated due to the high risk of renal crisis. Nantidonib was recently approved based on the result of census trial. 
Tocilizumab has demonstrated some preservation of lung function and has recently been approved. Cyclophosphamide was favored based on the result of the SLS1 trial while mycophenolate was favored due to better tolerability and less side effect based on SLS2 trial. There are no large randomized controlled trials in the treatment of myositis related IELD. Different aminosuppressive has been used for treatment of rapidly progressive myositis related IELD include pulse IV methylprednisolone and IV cyclophosphamide or rituximab. Adjunctive therapies include oxygen therapy, esophageal reflux disease treatment with a high dose PPI, pulmonary rehabilitation, influenza and pneumococcal vaccine, palliative care, and lung transplant if disease progress despite of therapy. Interstitial pneumonia with autoimmune features IPF is a distinct research a term for a sizable portion of ILD patients who present with clinical, serologic, and radiographic features suggesting CTD ILD but do not meet established diagnostic criteria of CTD ILD. This is a term used by the American Thoracic Society and European Respiratory Society. The full criteria for diagnosis of this condition has three domains clinical, serological, and morphologic. The full criteria of IPF by ERS ATS can be seen over here. Thank you very much for listening.